Hey guys, today I'm going to do kind of a little bit of a different video. Um, uh, I think I'm going to start taking the channel a little bit in this direction. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to keep doing all my horror movie reviews, which I still have my 31 Days of Halloween thing to wrap up, but let me get into this video. Uh, a while ago, I saw an article from the Willamette Week, I think it was, and they were ranking the Insane Clown Posse's Joker cards. And uh, I've been a Juggalo since the summer of 96. So, like, after Riddle Box, before Great Malenko. Um, maybe one day I'll get into the story of, like, how I was introduced to them and stuff. I mean, basically, the short story is that I just... I had a friend who was like, hey... You know, you need to listen to these guys. And I was like, all right. And then he played me Riddlebox, Joker's Wild. And I've heard... Okay, I'll get into this a little bit later. But anyway, uh, yeah, I saw that. And then, you know, recently I've kind of been looking around at kind of like what you'd call, I guess, a Juggalo YouTube. And uh, one of the popular videos kind of going around is ranking the ICP Joker cards. And I guess um, from every video that I've watched so far, Violent Ed was one of the first ones to do it. And then DC Fago Guy did one. And then um, either Mike Sears, Speak of Clout Podcast, or Roan Bones, um, Beneath the Dirt. I'm not sure which one of them did theirs first. But um, they've all thrown their hat into the ring. And I think me and Beneath the Dirt are probably the closest. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with kind of the era that we're from. Which I think everybody has said is that, you know, every Joker card always comes with kind of a different phase in your life. And so you always attach a lot of feelings and things to those Joker cards. Because this list, all these lists are completely subjective. You know, you may like the album at my very bottom and, you know, your list may be the exact same as mine. Um, I've seen some, like, I'm going to be honest, from my opinion, I've seen some pretty crazy lists out there. All of theirs were pretty reasonable, except for maybe a couple, which I'll get into when I list them on my list. Of course, these always go from worst to best at the top. So, you know, um, I'll just start the list. Um, at the very bottom, I have um, the marveling lit, the Marvelous Missing Link Lost. This album is garbage. Like, I, 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 it was hard for me to sit through this album once, let alone again, to do for this video. Because I re-listened to almost every album, minus the ones that I listen to all the time anyway. And The Marvelous Missing Link Lost is awful. Like, it's just terrible. It's just, like, front to back, really bad. There's maybe one good song on it, Vomit. And what's funny is that was kind of like the single they released. I think they knew that was the good song on the album. Um, it, my problem with this album, I think for the most part, is that I feel like a lot of the hooks kind of ruin a lot of the songs. Because I'll listen to it and I'm like, okay, this is a decent song. And then the hook comes in and it just kind of like ruins the whole thing for me. Yeah, so, you know, bottom of the list is the Marvel's Missing Link, Lost. And something I was going to mention is that in DC Fago guy's list, he kind of says, you know, like, oh, I, you know, I like all the Joker's cards. There hasn't been a bad one yet. And I'm I'm definitely not of that mindset. I'm more of the mindset of, like, they've released some pretty trash, some pretty trash stuff over the years. Um, but, you know, that's kind of why we make these lists to kind of show, you know. Anyway, uh, next up is the other half of those albums, The Marvelous Missing Link, law, or Found, sorry, Found. And this one only has a couple good songs in it. Um, I like Get Clowned and I Fucked a Cop. Those are two songs that, you know, I could get down to, which is more than what I could say for Lost. Yeah, I mean, it's just another album where, like, maybe... I mean, I don't even know if I would take those two songs off and put them in a playlist because they're not even, you know, that good to put on a playlist for me to listen to. Yeah, so, and that's just one of kind of one of those albums that were kind of in the flyover time for ICP, in my opinion. Um, which is kind of weird because it's kind of the third card in that second deck, but it's, yeah, I don't know, it's strange. That was kind of a definitely a diversion for them. Um, and then the next album, this is where it starts to get into more like I could listen to this area, you know, uh, and that's Bang Pa Boom. 
Um, uh, you know, in your face, Fonz Pond. I like Juggalo Island, Vultures. I like Vultures. It's really not that bad of an album. Um, I will say once the second Joker's card had happened, um, I kind of fell off a little bit, um, because it was kind of like my entire kind of like, I don't want to say childhood, but when I was a teenager, it was like, what's going to happen when the sixth Joker's card drops? And then, I mean, you know, nothing happened and they just kind of came up with this concept to do a second deck, you know, and now they're going to do a third deck, but you know, at the time, it was really kind of strange. It was like right around, actually being 100% honest, after the Wraith came out, I kind of dropped off a little bit and it, because the Hell's Pit was the first album I didn't buy a release, you know, since I'd been a Juggalo. But anyway, let's get back into the list. Uh, I just want to kind of throw that in there for that card. Uh, and then uh, next on my list would be the Mighty Death Pop. This is a lot of people's favorite card from the second deck. For me, I think it's I think it's a pretty good album, but it's not my favorite from the second deck. Uh, you know, Night of the Chainsaw, Juggalo Juice, Chris Benoit is a great song. I like Hater to Death quite a bit, actually, too. It's a, I mean, this was definitely, like, a good album in the second deck. That's for sure. Um, you know, this is a good one to kind of chill out to, listen to. Like I said, Chris Benoit is a really good song. This is kind of, you know, more of a return to form over what kind of what they were doing with, you know, with the Tempest and all that, at least for me. And then the next one up, this is where, like, the albums get really good for me. This is like, there's like a step up for me from Mighty Death Pop to this next album, where these are albums where, for the most part, I'd listen to them all the way through. So the next one is Fearless Fred Fury. The newest Joker's card. I really, really like this album. Um, I was really surprised, especially after A Marvelous Missing Link, uh, at how much I like this album. Because I've always been of the mindset that like uh, their newer stuff is just so much better than what they're doing now. And I'll get into that a little bit when I get a little bit higher. There's something I want to tack on to one of the other um, higher ranked albums. Um yeah, I like this one. You know, Westburner Ave, Night of Red Rum, Shimmer. I, I like I like it rough. The only thing I don't like about that song is the 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 warning. It's like you're listening to Insane Clown Posse. Like, you don't need to put a warning before one of your songs. Like, we know what we're getting into. I think it's just kind of a funny little skit that they put before it, but I, I like that song too. And then after that is Hell's Pit. And this is the first Joker's card that I didn't get a release. I waited a little while, and then eventually I was like, I'll pick it up, you know. Um, I think I got the one with the DVD that was like the short little, I think it was a music video, where like Shaggy's like a monster or Frankenstein or something. I don't, it's been forever since I've watched that. But um, yeah, I mean, that's it's another, you know, for a lot of people, this is kind of like a classic album. For a lot of people, this is where they first started listening to them. You know, um, CPKs, uh, Walk in the Darkness. It's, the album's got a lot of really good songs in it. it like I said, this is, this is definitely an album where I can listen to it front to back. You know, uh, Fearless Fred Fury, I think there's like one track, like low, I don't know. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple songs on Fearless Fred Fury that I would skip over. Hell's Pit, I could listen to the whole thing front to back. And, and you know, there isn't a song on that that I would, you know, intentionally skip over. And for the next up is The Wraith. And this is like, and what's funny is it just turned 17 not too long ago. But The Wraith is like an album that um, justified my listening to ICP. And um, to get into that a little bit, uh, my father is a minister. And so kind of growing up listening to ICP... You know, I don't think they ever heard the music, but they definitely, I think, had a feel for it. And so when I got to play the un the eye unveiling for him, it was kind of like a like a gotcha moment for me. You know, it was like I see. You know, this whole time you thought I've been listening to this, and this is what they're about. So it was kind of a cool, it's kind of a cool moment for me. Um, you know, other you know good songs on that. I like Welcome to the Show. Juggalo Homies, Crossing Thy Bridge. You know, it's another album that you can listen front to back. I'm not going to say that anymore because 
all of the rest of the albums for me are albums that you can listen to front to back. Um, and what I was going to say from earlier is that with the Joker's cards, when they first started out, Carnival of Carnage was completely different than Ringmaster. Ringmaster was completely different than Riddlebox. Riddlebox was completely different than Jekyll Brothers. Jekyll Brothers was completely different than The Wraith. And I feel like once they hit The Wraith, they had kind of found the sound that they wanted to go with. That or, you know, Mikey Clark just stopped producing for them, but run with me here. And for me, every album they've released since um, The Wraith, Hell's Pit, has sounded very much kind of like The Wraith, Hell's Pit. Um, they, I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, Marvel's of Sting Link's a little bit different, and they have little weird songs here and there that are a little bit different, but there's something about everything after the first deck that sounds so similar to The Wraith, Hell's Pit. I can't put my finger on it exactly, other than, like I said, they kind of, had that falling out with Mikey Clark, and I think that drastically changed their sound. But anyway, that's kind of my take on that one. Uh, and then, you know, coming in at, we're at number five now, uh, is Carnival of Carnage. And I've seen this album at a lot of people's bottoms list, the bottom list, and I don't know why. Like, I've seen some of the explanations, which, you know, I could see, I guess, and that, you know, this is when ICP hadn't really gotten in their groove yet. Um, they were still kind of learning their own kind of, you know, flow and stuff like that. But this is, I love this album. Like, and I can understand how new fans might not like it because it's, it, it's definitely old school. And it's like I said earlier, like they changed their sound so many times and this is definitely a much different sound for them. You know, Night of the Axe, The Juggler, Your Rebel Flag. Those are all like absolute, you know, bangers. Um, well, you know, something else that I think is funny, I'm kind of divulging a lot when I'm telling this, but I like kind of questioning some of these things is I, I know several times Violent J has said, you know, we can explain every lyric, we can explain everything, who we kill is this and that and racist and all these different things. But I don't know if they had that from the beginning because in Carnival of Carnage, if you listen to Night of the Axe, there's that line that's like, innocent people is what I want. So I'm heading to the restaurant and it's like, Wait a second. I thought you only killed racist and all these other people. So I'm I'm not sure if they had that vision of the carnival or uh the dark carnival from the get with with Carnival of Carnage. I'm not sure. I can't say that. I can't say that for sure. Unless Night of the Axe is kind of just like the song where they're like, you know, one of their weird off songs, you know. Um but that's Carnival of Carnage at number 5. And number four is the Jekyll Brothers. Like, I, this is an album that I really, I've honestly been thinking about it a lot recently, obviously, because I was going to do this video. And Jekyll Brothers, I, I'm not going to go this far. I was going to say that the Jekyll Brothers and all these next cards will intertwine between being my favorite, but Jekyll Brothers will always, always be right up there. And that's partially because Jekyll Brothers, it's another one of those kind of nostalgic cards for me where, like, uh, Jekyll Brothers was the first time I met ICP, actually. Me and a bunch of friends went up to uh, the Asylum in-store tour, signing tour for the Jekyll Brothers. And that was when, you know, they wore the straight jackets and they showed up in the little white bus and they built an asylum inside the record store. And Twisted was there. I don't remember Blaze being there, but I've read online that Blaze was there. And they went in, inside there and Twisted and Blaze hid behind this kind of plexiglass thing. And when you walked in the asylum, they'd kind of jump around and stuff. It was, uh, you know, so I have a lot of really fond memories about the Jekyll Brothers. Um, you know, Mad Professor, Fuck the World, I Want My Shit, Bitches with ODB. Like, the whole album has the Jake and Jack Jack. I always like the, t like the... I don't know if I want to call them title tracks, but the tracks where they kind of talk about the Joker card, like Jake and Jack Jekyll, like, I love those tracks for some reason, like The Great Malenko was really good, you know, uh, but yeah, that album, I really love that album, and it holds a lot of kind of nostalgic feelings for me of that era. Uh, a lot of these upper Joker cards do, but uh, Jekyll Brothers especially, because I was there for the full release like I was for Malenko too. 
Um, yeah. So, all right, now we're on to number three. And this is where we get into all of these albums are interchangeable. But, you know, for the purposes of this video, I kind of put them in, like, the order that I felt like maybe I like this album just a little bit more, you know, right now or, you know, overall. And, you know, I, you know, I just kind of tried to, you know, weasel it out. But anyway, number three is Ringmaster. Uh, this is, uh, man, when I was a kid, this was probably my favorite Joker's card. Even for, for a long time, this was my f number one favorite Joker's card. I used to have one of those no-skip CD players. And even before that, I had the cassette for Ringmaster. But uh, I had one of those no-skip CD players. And uh, I had a paper route. And I almost always played Ringmaster on this paper route. You know, depending on your mood, you know, throw in Riddle Box or something. But Ringmaster is one of those that I played all the time. Like, specifically, like, Wagon Wagon, Bugs on My Nugs, Murder Go Round, The Loons. Like, The Loons is still one of my favorite ICP songs. Like, I love that song, The Loons. It's, like I said, still one of my favorite songs. Maybe one day I'll do, like, a countdown of my favorite ICP songs. It'd be a hard list to do, but it's possible. But yeah, I mean, the Ringmaster, I think the Ringmaster was the second Joker's card that I actually bought. Because first was Riddlebox, second would have been, I believe, Ringmaster, and then third probably would have been um, uh, uh, Carnival Carnage, obviously. And then, you know, in between, I bought, you know, Beverly Kills and Tunnel of Love and um, Terror Wheel. But uh, that's number three, Ringmaster. Uh, and so now we're down to the big two. And this one was actually really hard because I switched them back and forth a couple different times before I kind of came to the conclusion of this one. So, number two is Riddlebox. And this, to a lot of people, this is the peak ICP. Um, <clears throat> and this is the card that I first listened to, like, ever. So, it's a little weird giving it the second place spot. But, um, you know, I obviously feel like Great Malenko edges it out a little bit. Um, you know, I mean, this is just such a classic album. You know, Chicken Hunting, 12, I'm Coming Home, Three Rings, Dead Body Man. Uh, you know, Joker's Wild, I think I already mentioned that one. Like, this is just, this whole album is just, you know, banger by banger by banger. You know, like, that whole album you can just completely listen to. You know, I said that before, but front to back, it's just, it's just one of those kind of like albums where, I, oh man, I have, <laughs> I'm like speechless by this album right now. Um, and you know, if you're from the Northeast, like I am, like Ohio, a lot of times I run into Juggalos whose first card was Riddle Box because that was when ICP really kind of got out of Detroit and started to kind of go elsewhere. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of, like, Texas, Dallas, Texas Juggalos who Riddle Box was their first album that they heard. And, you know, for a lot of people, that holds a lot of, you know, nostalgic feelings. And, and it does for me, too. Um, but, you know, the next one, number one, my favorite album by ICP, one of my favorites, Great Malenko. Um, this is the first Joker's card that... I um, was around for the release um, and knew when it released because I was like using like library internet to like, you know, read everything up on, you know, ICP and see what was coming out and everything else. I was also a part of their um, <clears throat> mailing fan club. So I get those flyers in the mail and everything, you know, and, you know, you knew Great Malenko was coming, you know, dedicated to the butterfly, all the mysteries of when you were a juggalo, like in, you know, an early juggalo from the first deck, you know, there were all these things that you wondered what they were, you know, but that's getting into something else. Great Malenko is, uh, you know, the album where probably most old school juggalos are from just because this is the album that blew up because of the whole Disney Hollywood records debacle that happened. Um, I got the gold Hollywood record because I went as the day it was released, I went in and bought it and I knew to get the gold one. And so I still had that one somewhere. I don't listen to my CDs too much anymore, but I still have that album. Uh, you know, Halls of Illusions, Pass Me By, Hocus Pocus. This is also the first time I think that they had a lot of money to record their albums. So, and it shows on the record. This is just, 
you know, another one like Riddle Box and Great Malenko are two albums that you're just you can't beat. You really can't. It's really hard. Like Ringmaster, I like more from kind of like it's kind of carny and kind of uh, uh, what's the right word? Charm. But Riddle Box and Malenko are just, you know, flat out to me, the best albums ICP has ever done. Like I, you know, I hope one day they top it because I'd love to get new music that I fall in love with from them. But I don't foresee that coming. Um, you know, uh, when I was making this list, I kind of played with Fearless Fred Fury. Like at one point I had it above uh, Hell's Pit. And then I was like, hmm. And then I went back and listened to Hell's Pit again. And I was like, hmm. I was like, there's nothing on Hell's Pit that I really skip over. And Fearless Fred Fury, there's, I think, one or two tracks that I skip over. So I was like, I got to put Hell's Pit above Fearless Fred Fury. Even though there are some songs on Fearless Fred Fury I probably like a lot more than I like on Hell's Pit. Like, it, in my opinion, if I have to skip over stuff, I'd rather listen to an album front to back than have to go through and kind of skip over certain tracks. But yeah, that's... That's my ranking of the Joker's cards. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of weird lists out there. I mean, I've some seen some people rank the Marvelous Missing Link at number two on their rankings. And, you know, a lot of that has to do with when you became a Juggalo. You know, did you just become a Juggalo and you're like, Fearless Fred Fury's the best? And you listen to these other albums and you're like, man, that sounds really old, you know? So, I mean, you know, a lot of it, like I keep saying, is completely subjective. And for me, just being an old school juggalo from way back in 96, these are my favorite albums. This is the stuff that I think is the best that they've released. You know, you're free to disagree. Uh, if you have a different list, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, you know, I'll link all those channels I talked about and I'll link the article that they wrote, which is really bad. I didn't get into it too much, but they had Great Malenko as the second worst album by ICP and... Their number one was Jekyll Brothers, so I can't really complain with that too much. But yeah, that list was a little little rough, I think. <laughs> so yeah, I'll link all those. Violent Ed, DC Fago Guy, Beneath the Dirt, and Mike Sears Speaky Clout Podcast. Check all those guys out. Most of them are still doing stuff pretty regularly. So check out their channel. Uh, I hope you guys like this ranking. Um, you know, we'll see where this goes. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again soon.